in a car and take a trip and go home. <laughs> it wasn't so dramatic um, until the very last moment where they climbed into their vehicle and they we closed the hatch and it was like, oh, they're leaving. <laughs> and um, so I imagine that that very day is going to feel much like that for everybody else on board, except me. I will probably be in tears. Um, but, uh, you know, so the first step would be to get inside and, and then uh, most of the work will be done by my two Russian crewmates, uh, Sasha and Misha, as they prepare our vehicle to undock and come back home. At some point we'll put on our, uh, our Sokol suits, our launch and entry suits, and climb into our seats and uh, get ourselves strapped in and braced. Um, from that point forward, uh, we, you know, we uh, will uh, do a, a deorbit burn and uh, uh, orient, uh, rotate the Soyuz so that it's in just the right uh, orientation to re-enter the atmosphere. And um, this step's called uh, Razdalenia and it's where the, the modules separate and uh, the uh, living compartment, the BO, goes uh, in uh, one orbit. The uh, instrumentation compartment goes into another orbit. And then we in the descent module will go straight through uh, the atmosphere and hopefully land on target. The, here's a funny story. The night before I left Star City, Russia, for Baikonur, I sat down with uh, Mike Full, who is a veteran uh, uh, astronaut, uh, quite experienced and has spent his fair share of time inside a Soyuz. And uh, we sat down on the couch and just had a conversation about all the bells, bangs, and whistles that we'll hear because uh, there certainly are, uh, it, there's a plentitude, I understand, of uh, uh, sights and sounds as you're re-entering. And um, it was a very interesting conversation as we talked about, yeah, at this point you're going to hear a bang, and then you're going to feel this jolt, and then you're going to kind of smell this uh, interesting uh, odor as the, um, as the ablation material starts to, to burn off. And anybody sitting outside this conversation would have thought we were, we were mad, <laughs> that we were absolutely nuts for uh, signing up for this because it, it didn't sound anything uh, uh, less dramatic than a car crash. But, um, and I've, I've, uh, I've heard it described as a, a train wreck followed by a, uh, a car crash followed by a um, falling off your bike kind of thing. But honestly, I think that's just... Um, folks trying to find a bit of humor in, in, a, in a hard landing, which I understand the uh, Soyuz is. But um, they train us very well for this. Uh, our seats are molded to fit us. I don't think I've ever had anything fit me so so well as my Sokol suit and my seat liner. And uh, we strap ourselves in and uh, brace ourselves for... Um, the soft landing jets to uh, uh, fire, and uh, we feel Mother Earth again um, at our back. I've heard so many stories from people describing what landing's like, and all I can really say is that uh, I'm going to expect uh, this to be Mr. Toad's wild ride for me. Uh, much more um, like like the launch was, uh, you know, the, there's no simulator that is uh, as good as the day of launch where you have all of the the jostling the 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 sounds um and the the true environment that you're launching in plus i haven't trained as often in the uh, as much in the soyuz as i have in the shuttle and when i launched and landed in the shuttle i had a pretty good uh feel for the timing of when big events were going to happen and i could uh, anticipate a lot better than I can in the Soyuz. And though I've been trained uh, to the extent everyone is trained in a Soyuz, um, we just don't spend enough time operationally um, as a core of astronauts at the Soyuz that we, that, you know, to the same degree like we do the shuttle. So when I launched on the shuttle and when I landed on the shuttle, you know, I had spent so much time uh, outside of my training as an astronaut, as a Cape Crusader and astronaut support personnel down at the Cape. I've, I've climbed inside the orbiter and I've been in that simulator a dozen times that you could be asleep and run through the whole ascent and entry profile in your mind and prepare yourself that way. We don't have that kind of time nor luxury with the Soyuz 
uh, nor do we have the same opportunities that we do for the shuttle. And so that level of anticipation is really just um, provided to me by uh, my fellow crewmates who have gone before me. And so I hang on to their descriptions, and uh, I look forward to experiencing this uh, to a large degree. There's a small degree of me that says, you know, there are some key things. Make sure your, your, your straps are tight. <laughs> you get your head back and your tongue is not between your teeth when you land. These are things that um, are simple, and I can remember them. I'm lucky that I am in the right seat and I don't have a whole lot to do. Mostly uh, the uh, commander is the one that's uh, got a lot of work to do and the left seater is uh, monitoring systems and those two are, uh, it's their job to make sure everything goes uh, as planned and according to schedule and then um, I'm pretty much there uh, to provide uh, weight and balance I think. <laughs> and uh, those are my thoughts on, on that. I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, being extracted from the Soyuz uh, right where we're supposed to land and getting carried like a princess to my fur chair. I've seen it happen a dozen of times on television, and I simply can't wait to feel what that chair <laughs> is like. <laughs> Granted, I will be, um, I will be slightly... Uh, uh, mesmerized by all of the vestibular uh, effects of entering 1G. I hope that does not cloud the sensation of resting in a furry chair. <laughs> and then I can't wait to be carried by, by four people um, to a tent in my furry chair. I understand you get an apple when you land. I'm kind of looking forward to that too because it's... Uh, not every day on board space station that you get an apple. So I think that's kind of cool. I can't wait to taste that. I hope that when it comes time to take my Sokol suit off, that the world has slowed down spinning long enough for me to get my head through my neck down and out of my suit. Once that happens, everyone can pick it back up and start spinning again. But until that happens, I sure hope that we all kind of remain calm so that I can do this pretty smoothly. And uh, feel like a hero to myself for hanging in there. Until my Sokol suit comes off, I don't, gonna, I, I don't think I'm going to feel uh, like my mission is over. Really, it might be either tomorrow or today. Oh, do you want me to perform the... We're going to send about five commands, which should take about two minutes, and we'll be able to tell you... It's at your discretion. Do you need it or not? Hey, copy. Do you need me to leave this command window open, or uh, do you want me to close it? And you can close that. Okay, thanks. This is Mission Control Houston now uh, back with the view on the outside of the International Space Station following that video recorded uh, last week by Tracy Caldwell Dyson on board the complex. She is uh, pre preparing to return to Earth uh, Thursday after 175 days in space for uh, her mission aboard the station. And she provided uh, her reflections on the uh, increment or expedition aboard the complex as well as her anticipated landing in the Soyuz that uh, brought uh, she and her crewmates Alexander Skortsov and Mikhail Kornienko to the station in April. That uh, return activity of uh, the Soyuz and that crew will be...